Why are we the only human species left on the planet? It is possible, according to some anthropologists, that we may have to rethink the origin of our species when it comes to referring to ourselves, because new discoveries suggest that we may be a type of Frankenstein hybrid, made up of pieces of other human species, with whom we shared our planet, and produced offspring until relatively recently. Three recent discoveries have led scientists to re-evaluate the origins of Homo sapiens and our evolutionary history. These discoveries have changed what we know about the origin of the human race and of our own species. The finds point to there having been up to eight different species, or groups, of humans in existence 200,000 years ago. All of these form part of the human genus, in which modern humans are included. The recent additions to human evolution display an interesting blend of primitive characteristics, including huge arches above the eyebrows and flat heads, as well as modern traits. The so-called Dragon Man or Homo Longi, discovered in China, possessed a cranial capacity similar to or greater than modern humans. The Nesha Ramla hominid, discovered in Israel, could possibly be from a species that preceded and contributed to the European Neanderthals and East Asian Denisovans. Our own species had repeated encounters with these groups, producing mixed-race children who were accepted by their tribes as another member of the family. Today we know that because of this intermingling, every modern human beyond the African continent, carries 3% Neanderthal DNA, and that the inhabitants of Tibet carry genes that enable them to live at high altitudes that were passed on from the Denisovans. Furthermore, genetic analysis of the current population of New Guinea suggests that the Denisovans, a branch of the Neanderthal family tree, remained in existence as recently as 15,000 years ago, a mere blink of the eye in evolutionary terms. The third big discovery occurred when researchers analyzed DNA preserved in the floor of the Denisova cave in Siberia, and found genetic material from indigenous humans. These Denisovans, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens dated from periods of such close proximity that they all could have overlapped. Several years ago, the remains of the first known hybrid of two human species were discovered in the same cave, the daughter of a Neanderthal and a Denisovan. If you are not yet a subscriber, please click that big red button now, so you don't miss any earth-shattering content. Then, paleoanthropologists gave science one of these new human species when they identified Homo luzonensis, who lived on an island in the Philippines until at least 67,000 years ago. This human had a curious mixture of characteristics that could have been the result of a long evolution of over a million years, spent without contact with other early humans. It is a similar story to that of his contemporary, Homo floresiensis, or Flores Hobbit, a human species standing just at three feet tall, who lived on the Indonesian island. Flores man had a brain the same size as a chimpanzee, but if we apply the intelligence test most commonly used by paleoanthropologists, we can say that he was as advanced as sapiens, and used stone tools of equal evolutionary craftsmanship. To these two island dwellers can be added Homo erectus, the first human traveler who departed Africa two million years ago, spreading throughout Asia and who existed there until less than 100,000 years ago. The eighth player in this story is Homo daliensis, whose fossilized remains were found in China, and who was a mixture of primitive and modern traits. But Homo daliensis may yet be ascribed to the recently denominated line of Homo longi, who in turn is closely related to the Denisovans. Moreover, it's not surprising that there were various species of humans alive at the same time. If we take into account the last geologic age, which started 2.5 million years ago, there have always been different races and species of hominoids sharing the planet. The big exception is the present day, never before has one human species existed alone on the Earth. But why are sapiens the last humans standing? For some anthropologists, the answer is community. We are a hypersocial species, the only ones capable of constructing bonds beyond close kinship, unlike the rest of the mammals. We share consensual stories like country, religion, language, and team, and we are willing to sacrifice everything for them, including our lives. Not even the Neanderthals, our closest relatives, who fashioned ornaments, symbols, and art, shared this hypersocial behavior. 
For reasons that are still unknown, the Neanderthals died out some 40,000 years ago, but it may have been because they were not able to compete with hypersocial modern humans. However, sapiens were not superior in the strictest sense to their contemporaries. Today we know that we are the result of hybridizations with other species, and the combination of characteristics that we possess turned out to be perfect for that moment in time. Another possible additional advantage is that Homo sapiens lived in large groups than the Neanderthals, which would lead to less inbreeding and better general health among populations. Part of this explanation lies in the very essence of sapiens, which means wise in Latin. We have a huge brain that we need to nourish, and as such we need vast resources and as a result a lot of territory. Homo sapiens experienced a vast demographic expansion, and it is very likely that competition for territory was too hard for the rest of the human species. Another secret to Homo sapiens' success is what some call hyperadaptability. Ours is an invasive species and while not necessarily ill-intentioned, we have been an evolutionary Attila the Hun. At our pace, and due to our way of life, biological diversity has been diminished, including that of other humans. There is no denying that humans are one of the most impactful ecological forces on the planet and this history started to be forged in the Pleistocene, the geological period from 2.5 million years ago to 10,000 years ago, when Homo sapiens became the only remaining human species in existence. These recent finds have served to add fuel to a growing issue. Scientists are naming more and more human species. But is it really logical to do so? In the view of the paleoanthropologists who made the discovery at the Nesha Ramla archaeological site, the answer is no. There are too many species, they believe. The Nesha Ramla hominins lived between 420,000 and 120,000 years ago in the Middle East, and had a distinctive combination of Neanderthal and archaic Homo features. Plus they had fully mastered technology that until only recently was linked to either Homo sapiens or Neanderthals. They were efficient hunters of large and small game, used wood for fuel, cooked or roasted meat, and maintained fires. The mysterious Nesha Ramla hominids may even represent our most recent common ancestor with Neanderthals. Its mix of traits supports genetic evidence that early gene flow between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals occurred between 400,000 and 200,000 years ago. In other words, that interbreeding between the different hominid populations was more common than previously thought. The classical definition of species states that two different species cannot have fertile children. But DNA tells us that Homo sapiens, Neanderthals and Denisovans had such children in which case they should be considered the same species. If we are sapiens, then these species, who are our ancestors by way of admixture, are also sapiens. This issue has become a source of confrontation and controversy between experts. That is because hybridization is very common among existing species, especially in the vegetable world. The concept of species can be nuanced. So we shouldn't abandon it because it is very useful for helping us to understand evolution. There are many factors at play in this debate. The evident differences between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals are not the same thing as the identity of a species, such as Homo luzonensis, of whom only a few teeth and bones have ever been discovered, or the Denisovans, of whom the majority of available information derives from DNA extracted from tiny fossils. Curiously, despite the frequent contact between them, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals were perfectly recognizable and distinguishable species until the end. Indeed, the traits of the late Neanderthals are more prominent than their predecessors, rather than having become less distinct as a result of mixing. There were biological interchanges, and possibly cultural ones as well, but neither of these species stopped being themselves. They were distinct groups, biologically and visually identifiable, with their specific adaptations and their ecological niche in the history of evolution. Therefore, this is the best example that hybridization does not necessarily collide with the concept of species. Paleoanthropologists agree that modern humans evolved in Africa about 200,000 years ago, yet the fossil evidence for the earliest examples of Homo sapiens is scarce. 
one problem is the difficulty in recognizing and dating true modern humans in the fossil record. At this time, many of the fossils thought to be early members of our species possess a mix of modern and primitive traits. For some paleoanthropologists, this means our species once had a greater range of physical variation than we do today. For others, it means more than one species of human may have lived in Africa at this time, sharing some traits in common, but maintaining distinct groups. But for some, the evidence points to the Middle East, or the larger region of Southwest Asia as the origin of our species, some 400,000 years ago. Thanks for watching. Please check out these other videos or join us in the comments section. If you're not yet subscribed, please click that big red button now, so you don't miss any of our highly compelling videos. Thank you.